Have you ever been stung by a venomous creature? It hurts a lot. From centipedes to worms with metal teeth, here are some of the most venomous creatures in the world. The Giant Red Centipede The Giant Red Centipede is a horrifying species of monster. They are enormous, stupidly fast, and bite with uncanny strength. They are longer than most people's feet and beyond creepy. This centipede is totally red except for its dozens and dozens of pointy limbs that are a gross yellow color. Imagine the shock at 7.30 in the morning on a hot day in July of 2022 when Jesse Pye woke up and found one of these things in bed with him. Jesse, a 35-year-old resident of San Antonio, Texas, rolled over early in the morning and saw one of the meanest, ugliest, and most venomous creatures in the state of Texas. According to what Jesse said on social media, he first thought it was either a snake or a giant worm. Then he realized it had dozens of legs and he knew he was in serious trouble. Jesse moved slowly away from the massive centipede in his bed, put his glasses on, and grabbed his phone to start recording. He had never seen a centipede that big, and he didn't know if it was venomous, but he knew he needed to get his camera. Chances of an adult dying from the bite of a centipede are slim, but those who have been bitten by them say the pain is so intense you might wish you were dead. The giant red centipede can be found in the jungles of Laos, so if you're watching this video, it's doubtful you'll ever see one with your own eyes. The deadliest ones lurk in the far corners of the world. Scientists have seen centipedes in Venezuela so big, they scale cave walls and eat bats. In China, the golden head centipede is able to subdue prey significantly larger thanks to its venom. According to Shi Long Yang from the Kunming Institute of Zoology, centipedes hold the record for capturing prey 15 times their own body weight in a mere 30 seconds. These things are apex predators. But there are some centipedes closer to home. In Texas, the giant red-headed centipede is a very real venomous freak to look out for. It reaches 8 inches in length and has dozens of creepy yellow legs. It's the biggest centipede species in North America and can put you in some serious pain. The sting from the centipede isn't fatal, but the pain can last for hours. It feels like a bee sting that never wants to end. The Platypus the duck-billed platypus is not only the strangest animal in the world, it is also highly venomous. A woman in Australia recently learned this the hard way when she tried to save a platypus from the gutter. Jenny Forward was on her way home in Tasmania when she caught a glimpse of a creature struggling on the roadside. It looked to her like an injured platypus. So Jenny, being a good human, stopped to investigate. After all, who could just leave an innocent platypus flopping in the gutter? Unfortunately for Jenny, the platypus was solving its own problems that day. When she tried to pick it up, it jabbed its venomous spur into her hand and released venom into her bloodstream. Jenny said that it was so painful that it felt as if she'd been stabbed with a knife. When speaking with Australian reporters, Jenny said the pain of the platypus sting was worse than childbirth. It's a good thing you're watching this video because you're going to learn what to do if you ever get stung by a platypus. First of all, remove the spurs from your flesh. That was what Jenny did. The next thing to do is go straight to the hospital, which Jenny also did. Doctors gave her antibiotics and drugs for the pain. She was rushed into emergency surgery to get the wounds cleaned and stitched. So how long do you think the pain lasted? Jenny said that even after a week at home, her hand was still swollen red and in immense pain. Platypus venom isn't fatal to humans, but it's very painful. And now for number seven, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Casey Blue Eyes and Quentin Fairchild for supporting this channel. Thanks so much, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. The Brown Recluse. The brown recluse spider is the exact kind of creature you would expect to be venomous. It's a terrifying arachnid that crawled into a woman's ear in 2019. Sorry to be graphic, guys. If you're a little squeamish, maybe you want to skip to the next one. Susie Torres from Kansas City woke up one morning in late summer with a very strange sensation in her left ear. It was the same sensation we've all had at one time or another. It was as if someone had poured water into her ear. 
You know how you get when you go swimming or if you tilt your head the wrong way in the shower? Only Susie hadn't gotten wet. So how did her ear clog like that? Susie was alarmed, so she immediately went to the doctor to get her ears checked out. A medical assistant nearly gasped when they looked inside Susie's ear canal and spotted the hairy legs of a spider. As Susie slept the day before, a brown recluse spider had crawled into her head. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the brown recluse's venom can cause skin necrosis. What happens when this thing bites you is that the venom forms a lesion, then starts to destroy skin tissue. It essentially rots your skin right off. And that's not even mentioning the pain of the bite and the swelling itself. Someone having this happen inside their ear is unprecedented. If Susie had gotten bit, she may have had irreversible damage to her ear. Luckily, the medical professionals were able to extract the arachnid without it ever sinking its fangs into Susie's inner ear. The Stonefish The stonefish is one of the most terrifying creatures in the sea. It has venomous switchblades underneath its eyes. Its poison isn't necessarily fatal, but it does cause so much pain that people can die from the agony. In 2022, a photographer in Australia stepped on the most venomous fish on the planet. Knowing that he could die in the next 60 minutes, his last conscious decision was to make a TikTok video. His life was literally fleeting and he made a POV TikTok video. His name is Adam Clancy and he was 31 years old at the time of the incident. Instead of accepting painkillers, Adam poured himself a glass of wine and lay down to film himself coping with the intense pain. Adam got stung while wading through the water at night off the coast of Moreton Island in Queensland. He had his camera in hand already when he stepped on the stonefish, getting stuck with its poisoned barb. Stonefish have 13 barbs to deliver a wallop of potentially fatal venom. The venom from the fish can induce paralysis and breathing difficulty. It can also cause heart failure. It's not always fatal, as Adam knows, since he survived the ordeal. But the venom can kill in a variety of different ways. It's generally advised that anyone impaled by a stonefish seek immediate medical attention. Adam did not seek medical attention. He had a few glasses of whiskey and a bottle of wine and filmed himself instead. This video did gain over 9 million views, but months later he was still having issues. After weeks of not being able to walk properly, Adam performed surgery on himself and found that he still had the fish's barb stuck in his foot. Why? Why did he put himself through this? We're not in the 1800s anymore. The Rattlesnake 2023 was a rough year for people in America tangling with deadly rattlesnakes. In Palm City, Florida, an Amazon driver was dropping off a parcel when a rattlesnake bit her on the leg. In Cincinnati, a zoo worker was rushed to the hospital after being attacked by a rattlesnake as well. The incident in Florida must have felt like the worst day on the job. The Amazon driver was dropping off the package when the eastern diamondback rattlesnake lashed out at her from the front stoop. Most delivery drivers live in fear of dogs, not snakes. This serpent was curled up by the front door as if it had been waiting for the driver. When she dropped off the package, the snake lashed out, sinking its fangs into the back of the leg above the knee. The Amazon driver got sick immediately. She was so distraught that she couldn't figure out where she was when she called 911. The emergency services had to track her using the GPS on her phone. In Cincinnati, it was the exact same kind of rattlesnake that got the zoo worker. It happened at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden during the worker shift. She was in the behind-the-scenes area of the reptile house when the snake got her, though luckily the worker fared better than the Amazon driver. She was only partially bitten and didn't need antivenom. Out of all the snakes in the United States, the eastern diamond rattlesnake is the most dangerous. They grow up to 8 feet long and can weigh 35 pounds. If you happen to live in Palm City, the sheriff's office has advised locals to pay attention to their surroundings. They've warned people that if they're scrolling on their phones while walking, they might not see the snake until it's too late. If you have earbuds in while strolling, you might not hear the death rattle until the fangs are already in you. Hey, it's your own fault. It is a rattlesnake that tried to warn you. 
The Irukandji Jellyfish A pair of fishermen from Australia had to be airlifted to the hospital after they both got stung by one of the most venomous jellyfish on the planet. They had to get airlifted because the attack happened while they were stuck in the ocean. The victims haven't been named to protect their privacy. They were about 12 miles from the coast of Dundee Beach in Australia's Northern Territory in October 2023. This just happened. It's not really clear how, but they both touched an unknown species of Irukandji jellyfish. There are 16 different species of Irukandji jellyfish in the seas around Northern Australia. Each one has a venom so potent that it comes with its own syndrome. Irukandji syndrome. Symptoms include shooting pains in the muscles, hypertension, anxiety, and vomiting. People have heart attacks and stop breathing when they come into contact with a jellyfish. They get headaches, nausea, and sometimes die. Most victims make a full recovery, like these two fishermen. They were discharged after 48 hours at the hospital. But sometimes, when help doesn't come quickly enough, death can occur. Symptoms of Irukandji syndrome generally start within five minutes. The Brazilian Wandering Spider Panic broke out at a supermarket in Australia when a highly venomous spider was discovered in a box of bananas. The spider is known for causing extremely painful erections in men. Its venom is like a straight shot of Viagra from hell. The branch manager of the supermarket was looking through a box of bananas when they came across a Brazilian wandering spider. It's considered one of the deadliest arachnids that's ever existed. Its scientific name, Phunutria, means murderous in Greek. According to a scientific study in 2007, the spider's venom stimulates an erection that can last for hours and hours. It's also extraordinarily painful and just an overall unpleasant experience. It happens because the spider's venom boosts nitric oxide, which increases the flow of blood. Just imagine being in the middle of dying from a spider bite and you're stuck with the most embarrassing male problem that you've had since 8th grade math class. The supermarket was closed, then sealed. The fire department came and the whole place had to be cleaned and disinfected. Even after the disinfecting, would you go back to work? Could you stomach being in a place where there could be a Brazilian death spider crawling around? Let me know in the comments. The Fanged Fish There is a small Pacific fish that has venom very similar to heroin. It's called the Fang Bloody, an extraordinarily minuscule species of fish most people have never even heard of before. Scientists didn't know much about the fang blenny until they completed a study a few years ago. The study showed that the fish's tiny teeth, shaped kind of like the teeth from a saber-toothed tiger, are hollow to inject venom. The fangs are connected to special glands loaded with an intense chemical cocktail. When scientists analyzed the proteins from that cocktail, they were shocked to find a substance like heroin or morphine. Here's what happens when the fish bites one of its victims. The hollowed teeth inject an opioid-like substance that makes the victim sluggish and dizzy. The most interesting part is that the fang blenny doesn't use its venom for hunting prey. It's purely for defensive purposes. Scientists have witnessed fish trying to eat the fang blenny in the wild, only to immediately spit the smaller fish from their mouth. Whenever the fang blenny gets in trouble, it sticks its attacker with its huge curved fangs. The attacker is then injected with the heroin-like poison and made too high to continue the assault. This is an extremely unique defense mechanism. Out of the 2,000 fish scientists know to be venomous, 95% of them deliver toxins through spines and barbs. For example, the stonefish. The fang blenny is one of the very few that delivers its toxins more like a snake than a fish. The Bloodworm In case I haven't given you enough creepy creatures to infest your nightmares tonight, take a look at the bloodworm. It's just as horrific as it sounds. A venomous worm with teeth made from metal. They use their teeth for fighting and biting. And for years, scientists didn't understand their biology. It took 20 years of research to finally figure out the truth behind the venomous bloodworm. There are very few animals in this world that have metal teeth. The bloodworm's teeth are made from copper crystals and are so tough they can bite through an exoskeleton. These vicious worms bite straight through their victim's skeleton to inject venom deep into the core of their prey. 
The venom paralyzes the worm's victim nearly instantly. Scientists think the copper in the worm's teeth acts as a catalyst to boost the speed in which the venom debilitates the prey. You might be thinking, so what, right? It's just a stupid worm, it probably only grows a few inches long. I hate to break it to you, but that's entirely wrong. These slimy worms can grow over a foot in length and are extremely aggressive. Whenever they encounter another worm, they almost always get into a tooth fight. The good news for you and me is that they live on the bottom of shallow marine waters. You won't find any bloodworms in your garden. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The fishing spider. Fish may have thought they were safe from spiders at least, but nope. Fishing spiders, also known as dock spiders, wharf spiders, and raft spiders all like to catch fish. They are found all over the world and can catch fish up to five times their own size. 18 of the species have been seen catching fish, which is a pretty unusual behavior for a spider. These spiders live in freshwater environments where they swim, dive, and walk on the water surface to ambush the fish below. They are covered in velvety, waterproof hairs, which provide the surface tension necessary for running and standing on water. They can row when they are not in a hurry, and then they speed into a gallop. These nocturnal hunters are prey for birds and snakes, and they also fall victim to parasitic wasps who sting and paralyze a spider before laying eggs in its abdomen. When the larvae hatch, they consume the spider from the inside out. The spider's bite is venomous and probably not pleasant, but unless you are specifically allergic to the creatures, you don't need to worry about any serious side effects. The Golden Orb-Weaving Spider the Nephila order of fanged spiders, commonly known as golden orb-weaving spiders, giant wood spiders, and banana spiders, are found in warm regions throughout the world, including Australia, Asia, Africa, and the Americas. They are famous for their enormous and strong webs that they tend to build right about head height. Walking or even running into these webs is pretty terrifying. One user on Reddit said, I was running at Cape Hillsborough near McKay a couple of years ago. This time I was looking down and ran headlong into the yellow sticky web. I could feel giant legs crawling on my head. Lots of screaming and thrashing my head in a nearby bush ensued. I have never been more terrified in my life. Another added, once I was throwing a ball around on the street with my friend at dusk. Turned dark pretty quickly and there were no street lights. I miss a catch completely and the ball goes over near an alleyway. I sprint to go get it and then it hit me. Literally, I mean it hit me. I ran full speed into a golden orb spider. I couldn't even see it but I knew exactly what I had run into. Females can grow quite large with leg spans of over 5 inches. They are so big they have even been spotted killing and eating brown tree snakes in Australia. A 2014 study found that golden orb weaving spiders that live in urban areas, particularly wealthier neighborhoods, tend to be larger and carry more eggs than those that live in their natural habitat, suggesting that they are kind of snobby. No, I'm just kidding. But it looks like they have more food and lack predators in these types of areas. Wealth is good for some animals too. The good news is, it's not in the creature's nature to bite humans. When it happens, the symptoms are uncomfortable but bearable, consisting mainly of mild pain, swelling, and numbness, like a minor bee sting. Their silk has been used to make clothing and is even being studied to use in tissue engineering to help rebuild it. Fishermen will sometimes even gather the webs and use them as small fishing nets. The Six-Eyed Sand Spider over 38,000 identified six-eyed sand spider species have been found throughout South Africa's deserts and other sandy habitats, although scientists believe as many as 200,000 species may exist. This six-eyed sand spider is an ambush predator that hunts by burying itself in the sand and waiting for its next meal to come along. It's considered medium size with a body measuring between 0.3 and 0.6 inches and a leg span of up to 2 inches. The spider's venom is among the most potent of all spiders, and there is no anti-venom. Bites can have life-threatening or even fatal effects, including blood vessel leakage, blood thinning, and necrosis, or tissue death. Toxicology studies have shown that this venom is the most venomous of any spider, but like with all venomous creatures, deadly is relative. Just like with snakes, it depends on how much venom they inject in one bite. The good news is that it's extremely rare for six-eyed sand spiders to bite humans because they seldom come into contact with people. However, if you are far out in the desert and get bitten, the consequences could be dire. Have you ever been bitten by a spider? Or do you have one as a pet? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Bird Dung Crab Spider The appropriately nicknamed Bird Dung Crab Spider literally looks and smells like bird poop. 
Found in China, Japan, Sri Lanka, and Taiwan, it discharges a foul-smelling substance that scientists believe may help attract prey and repel predators by disguising the creature as dung. The resemblance is so uncanny the species even looks wet, like a fresh pile of you-know-what. To keep up the ruse, bird dung crab spiders spend a lot of time sitting still on plant leaves, waiting for insects to take the bait. At the same time, predators are put off by the creature's feces-like appearance. After all, a bird is not going to go after its own waste, as Joseph K. H. Ko of the Lee Kong Chian Natural History Museum in Singapore pointed out to New Science. But the moment the spider moves, it loses its poop-like appearance and goes back to looking like a spider. The bird dung crab spider is just one of several spiders and other animals that use mimicry to use their advantage by resembling dung, but it is unique in its ability to also smell like feces. The Sydney Funnel Web Spider The Sydney Funnel Web Spider is native to New South Wales, Australia. It's usually found within a 62-mile radius of Sydney, hence its name. The species has a fearsome reputation for its tendency to rear up on its hind legs when threatened, and for its having some of the most toxic known venom among spiders, which can be lethal to humans. While it's not in the species' nature to chase or attack humans, the Sydney funnel-web spider will react when it feels threatened, and it is known to live in urban areas, increasing the chances of such an encounter. Adult males' venom is much more toxic than that of juveniles and females, and they are known for falling into people's pools and wandering around in their backyards. Thankfully, they are not known to live inside homes. When it does bite, the Sydney fennelweb spider's fangs cause severe pain, and its venom contains a neurotoxin that attacks the nervous system, causing symptoms such as drooling, twitching, difficulty breathing, disorientation, confusion, loss of consciousness, and even death. Since an antivenom was introduced in 1981, there have been no known deaths from Sydney fennelweb spider bites. But in order to ensure survival, it's crucial for bite victims to seek medical help immediately. Combating a bite can take several doses of antivenom. A 10-year-old boy received a record 12 vials in 2017 after a funnel web spider that was inside his shoe bit his finger. Good news is he fully recovered. Scorpion-tailed spider Scorpion-tailed spiders are members of the Arachnura genus of orb-weaving spiders. They are found throughout Australasia, a region encompassing Australia, New Zealand, and surrounding islands, as well as southern and eastern Asia. Oddly, there is one species native to Africa. Females are much larger than males, but are still kind of small, reaching 10 to 30 millimeters long. Males grow to just 2 millimeters long. Only females have the scorpion-like tail, which grows gradually during their lifetime. Much like a scorpion, when a female feels threatened, she arches the tail up over her head. Besides looking like scorpions, females also mimic plant litter such as flowers, twigs, and dead leaves. Scorpion-tailed spiders and scorpions are not related, despite their similar appearance. And even though scorpion-tailed spiders are scary-looking, they are more or less harmless to humans, unlike some scorpions. They rarely bite, and when it happens, the symptoms are minor and are usually limited to local pain and swelling. Brazilian Wandering Spider Brazilian wandering spiders, also called armed spiders or banana spiders, come from the Phonutria genus, which is Greek for murderous. The name is well earned, as the spiders rank among the most venomous on Earth. There are eight species total. All are found primarily in Brazil, although occasionally a Brazilian wandering spider makes their way to Europe or North America via infested banana cargo shipments. These hairy brown spiders are large, growing up to two inches long with leg spans of up to six inches. Wandering spiders get their name because they hunt nocturnally on the forest floor instead of building webs, feeding on other spiders, insects, small mice, and even small reptiles and amphibians. During the day, they hide out in crevices and under logs. The Brazilian wandering spider has a reputation for being aggressive, but this is not entirely true. When threatened, they will raise their first two pairs of legs, which is meant as a warning to predators that the spider is venomous, giving the offender an opportunity to rethink their next move. They only bite as a means of self-defense and only when provoked or startled. The creature's bite contains a cocktail of toxins that increase blood flow and affect a person's neuromuscular system. Intense burning pain is usually the first symptom, along with sweating and goosebumps. Within a half hour, the effects begin to turn serious. Symptoms include high or low blood pressure, an elevated or decreased heartbeat, nausea, abdominal cramping, vertigo, hypothermia, blurred vision, convulsions, shock, and for men, a painful erection. Are you scared yet?
Bites don't happen often and are usually mild when they do, with just 2.3% requiring treatment with antivenom. As of 2008, only 10 known deaths had resulted from Brazilian wandering spider bites, according to a medical study which analyzed hundreds of bite records and statistics and determined that serious envenomations are extremely rare. It looks like they do not like to use all of their venom in one bite, so they are not left without a defense. If they use all of it at once, they would have to wait to make more before they could defend themselves or hunt properly, and would be more vulnerable. Longhorned Orb Weaver The longhorned orb weaver spider is the only known species of the Macrocantha genus. Discovered during the 18th century, it's found throughout India, China, and parts of Southeast Asia. It also reportedly has an invasive presence in the southeastern U.S. The species is recognized by the long, curved spines that females possess, which project upward and outward from their tough, shell-like abdomen. The length of the spines typically measure between 0.8 and 1 inches, and up to three times the spider's body width. Males, on the other hand, grow to just 0.06 inches long. Experts are unsure of the purpose of females' excessively long horns, but they believe the feature may serve to make the spider look intimidating to predators. Longhorned orb weavers live in forested areas and build huge webs, sometimes measuring up to 3 or 4 feet in diameter. Scientifically speaking, very little information is available about the species. Redback Spider the Australian black widow or redback spider is found mostly throughout Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia. They are not particularly strange looking or huge. Females, which are larger than males, have a maximum body length of around 0.4 inches and are black with a distinctive red stripe across the abdomen. Males grow to just 3 to 4 millimeters long. These nocturnal creatures often live in or near people's homes, where females build webs and feed on insects, other spiders, and small vertebrates. They kill their prey by clamping down on the creature with their fangs, which releases a complex venom that liquefies the prey's insides. Then the spider wraps its victim in silk and sucks the destroyed contents out of their body. Sometimes, the redback spider squirts superglue from its spinnerets at its more difficult targets, leaving them to struggle for hours and finally approaching to make the final kill when the prey is exhausted. Redback spiders can also be dangerous to humans, especially since they prefer warm, sheltered habitats that are often in populated areas and in close proximity to people. Consequently, they are responsible for an estimated 2,000 to 10,000 bites annually across Australia. Their venom is neurotoxic, often causing an illness called latrodectism. Initial symptoms, which can take hours to set in, include pain and swelling in the bite area, which spreads throughout the affected body part. Other symptoms include muscle rigidity, vomiting, lethargy, nausea, sweating, and agitation. Thankfully, there is an anti-venom. It's been around for 65 years and is even effective against bites from several species besides the redback spider. The Goliath Bird Eater the Goliath bird eater is the world's largest spider, so of course I have to talk about it. It hails from the tarantula family and is found in northern South America. The Goliath bird eater qualifies as the world's largest spider by mass and body length, weighing up to 0.4 pounds and measuring up to 5.1 inches long. The species comes in second to the giant huntsman spider when it comes to its leg span, which measures up to a foot in diameter, roughly the size of a dinner plate or the size of your face, whichever comparison you prefer. It rarely preys on birds despite its name and eats mostly worms, amphibians, and other spiders. But goliath bird eaters can and will eat small vertebrates when the opportunity arises, which is what gave them their fearsome reputation. These creatures have urticating hairs that they release when threatened, and which are severely irritating to human skin. They will shoot them toward the eyes, and if they get into your mucous membranes, you will be in a lot of pain. They also have sizable venomous fangs measuring between 2 to 4 centimeters, which are capable of penetrating human skin. While it's not necessarily in the species' nature to act aggressively towards people, a goliath bird eater will bite if they feel the need to defend themselves. They do not always administer venom when they bite, but if it happens, chances are you'll still be okay. The venom's effects are similar to the symptoms of a wasp sting, making them painful but not life-threatening. What doesn't kill you just makes you stronger. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Giant Freshwater Stingray Native to Southeast Asia, the giant freshwater stingray is one of the world's largest freshwater fish, reaching over 6 feet across, up to 16 and a half feet long, and often weighing as much as 1,300 pounds. Pretty impressive. 
Even though these creatures are massive, they are not aggressive. However, they have been known to sometimes push and pull boats around and even drag them underwater. Sailors told the story of a creature so large it would be mistaken for an island. They would anchor their ships to it and then the creature would dive, pulling the ship down with them. Fishermen today say that the stingray will pull their boat for miles and even pull them under. That's how strong they are. These rays can be dangerous if they want to be. After all, they have a 15-inch poisonous barb. This serrated stinger can easily pierce human skin and bone. The toxin causes an immediate painful stinging sensation, and if you get jabbed, it will most likely become infected. The best way to relieve the pain and swelling is to pour hot water over the wound as soon as possible, which breaks down some of the toxin. This bottom-dwelling species lives primarily in sandy and muddy areas of estuaries and rivers, occasionally bringing it into close contact with humans. In 2015, American TV nature conservationist Jeff Corwin spent two hours in Thailand's Mae Klong River, catching the largest fish ever captured by rod and steel, an 800-pound giant freshwater stingray, measuring 14 feet long and 8 feet wide. These impressive animals are endangered and are almost extinct in some places, including the Mekong River. King Cobra At up to 18 feet long, the King Cobra is the world's longest venomous snake. It's also one of the most venomous snakes on the planet, period. Cobras are found throughout Africa, the Middle East, India, Southeast Asia, and Indonesia. People have been mesmerized by their elegance and dangerous bite for thousands of years. A single king cobra bite can cause cardiac arrest and respiratory failure. According to National Geographic, they can deliver enough neurotoxin to kill 20 people or an adult elephant. When threatened or confronted, this terrifying giant will lift up to a third of its body off the ground, sometimes even bringing itself to eye level with its adversary. A snake will also flare out its hood and hiss at an opponent. Cobras have potent neurotoxic venom that attacks the nervous system and people can stop breathing just 30 minutes after being bitten by a cobra. Fortunately, there is an anti-venom, but you have to be able to get to it in time. King cobras generally avoid humans whenever possible and are naturally shy, but nesting females will ferociously guard their nests and will occasionally attack without being provoked. Most of the people who get bitten work with snakes or have them as pets. Peruvian Giant yellow leg Centipede did you know that most centipedes are venomous? Well, imagine one that can get to be about a foot long. The Peruvian giant yellow-leg centipede, also called the Amazonian giant centipede, is one of the largest species in the world. It's found in various regions throughout the Caribbean and South America, particularly the northern part of the continent, and generally dwells in tropical forests. This carnivorous giant will eat pretty much anything it can overpower, including large invertebrates like spiders, scorpions, and millipedes and small vertebrates such as lizards, frogs, and snakes that are up to 10 inches long, birds, mice, and more. A 3-gram centipede can take out a 45-gram mouse. Large Peruvian giant yellow-legged centipedes are even capable of partially suspending themselves from ceilings to catch bats. Yes, they will eat bats if they can. Its powerful neurotoxic components can neutralize prey in a matter of seconds. This species is fast, aggressive, and will bite, no problem. Most people will suffer non-fatal effects from the venom, but those who are allergic are at a higher risk for adverse reactions. If you're unsure whether or not you're allergic to centipede venom, it's probably smart to simply avoid handling one. And now for number eight. But first, big shout out to Jose C for supporting this channel. I really appreciate your nice comments. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join us and let me know your favorite venomous creature in the comments below. Nomura's Jellyfish. Nomura's jellyfish are typically found in the waters between China and Japan, mainly the Yellow Sea and East China Sea. They grow up to 6.5 feet in diameter and weigh as much as 440 pounds, with some record specimens even reaching 485 pounds. A big problem is the species' tendency to proliferate along Japanese shores. In 1958, 1995, and in recent years, a sudden abundance of jellyfish at a density of up to 100 times higher than normal was reported. Once the Nomura's jellyfish becomes a problem, it's very difficult to get rid of because when it's alarmed, the creature rapidly reproduces. In Japan, there is an official committee dedicated specifically to combating the species. Last year, South Korea also issued a warning about Nomura's jellyfish taking over its beaches, particularly near major cities like Busan and Ulsan. 
Population increases of this species in areas where it's unwelcome are attributed to factors like climate change, as well as increased phosphorus and nitrogen in the waters, making them ideal for breeding. Stings from this giant are very painful, but luckily rarely fatal. Still not great if you actually want to go swimming at the beach. Not really worth the risk or the pain. Platypus. There are very few venomous mammals left in the world. One of them is the platypus, an egg-laying cutie endemic to eastern Australia. At just five pounds on average, it's not huge, but it's the biggest among the planet's remaining venomous mammals. Males possess a sharp venomous spur on both of their hind feet. This venom shares some of the same properties with reptile venom, but it evolved separately. Researchers are slightly perplexed about why the platypus, a docile creature with very few natural predators, needs venom. They theorize that males use the spur offensively while competing over mates, which would explain why they produce the most venom during the spring, which is also breeding season. Even though they are cute with their thick fur, duck-like bill, and webbed feet, don't pet the platypus. Its venom is said to be very painful, but don't worry, if you do get gouged, you won't die. No known human fatalities have occurred from platypus venom, but it is known to occasionally kill dogs. People can expect symptoms like extreme pain, which can last for weeks, as well as swelling at the wound site. The pain lasts a very long time, and not even morphine would work against it. Doctors have to inject local anesthesia to make it stop. Scientists believe that learning more about the pain response that platypus venom triggers in humans can help them develop new pain medications and antibiotics. South American Bushmaster The South American Bushmaster is the largest modern viper species. It dwells in the tropical and humid forests of Central and South America. Bushmasters are often more than six and a half feet long and can reach up to 11 and a half feet long. They are the world's second longest venomous snake and the longest such species in the Americas, as well as the world's longest pit viper. This snake's bite can be fatal to humans. Its venom attacks the circulatory system and has an anticoagulative effect, meaning that the blood loses its ability to clot. Other bite symptoms include hypotension or low blood pressure and decreased heart rate. It's imperative for victims to receive emergency medical treatment for bites. People can get accidentally bitten by a bushmaster by unintentionally disturbing the animals. These snakes are known to stalk humans for several meters and to sometimes follow up with an attack. For this reason, members of the medical community have proposed an urgent need to develop more effective antivenoms than anything that's currently available. I never want to experience a snake chasing me. No thanks! Lion's Mane Jellyfish The largest known jellyfish species is the Lion's Mane Jellyfish, which can be found in the cooler waters of the Pacific, Atlantic, and North Sea regions, including the Arctic Ocean. It reaches up to six and a half feet long and has up to 1,200 tentacles, each measuring up to 120 feet long. The lion's mane jellyfish hunts by using its tentacles to capture fish, other jellyfish, and small crustaceans. It has a powerful sting that is excruciatingly painful for humans. Generally, it is not fatal, but it will hurt quite a bit. There is a story that in New England, one lion's mane jellyfish stung 40 people swimming at the beach, possibly because it was so large. Those who are allergic to its poison risk a deadly anaphylactic reaction, and people in poor health could suffer from a heart attack. Gila Monster Native to the southwestern United States and the northwestern Mexican state of Sonora, the Gila Monster is a heavy venomous lizard that grows up to two feet long. It's one of just two known venomous lizard species in North America and is the largest lizard species north of the Mexican border. Getting bitten by a Gila Monster is said to be incredibly painful. The lizard will clamp down with its strong jaws and hold on for dear life for up to 15 minutes. As it's biting down, it draws venom from its glands in its jaw and will gnaw so the venom enters the open wound. Symptoms from the venom include swelling, nausea, vomiting, chills, fever, and breathing difficulties, just to name a few. The Gila Monster has been around for a long time. It hails from the genus Heloderma, which has existed since the Miocene Epoch, and evidence of the species itself dating back to the late Pleistocene, between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago, has been found near Las Vegas, Nevada. Like other members of its genus, the Gila Monster has remained relatively unchanged over time, earning it the reputation of a living fossil. Due to its sluggish speed and the fact that they spent 95% of their lives hidden, this creature is generally not a threat to humans. Their venom inspired a drug to help treat people with type 2 diabetes. Vietnamese Centipede 
The Vietnamese centipede hails from the same genus as the Peruvian giant yellow leg centipede. It's one of the world's largest centipedes and, like its relative, uses its fast-acting venom to kill and devour prey, including insects, spiders, mice, and reptiles. Humans have died from Vietnamese centipede bites, according to the Hawaii Journal of Medicine and Public Health, but usually the effects are limited to reddening and extreme pain at the site. In early 2018, a Hawaii resident named Clayton Cambra, who's always been fascinated by ugly creatures, found a 14 and a half inch specimen in the woods behind his home. He captured the massive arthropod, but not without some struggle. He stood up in the five-gallon bucket like a cobra, Canberra told the Hawaii Tribune Herald. He crawled out of that bucket four or five times before I got him here. Eventually, Canberra managed to get the centipede into a plastic bag and placed it in his freezer. Then he thawed it out, injected it with formaldehyde, and put its remains on display in a case inside his house. The specimen measured much longer than the 10-inch world record holder at the time. It still has not been confirmed by the Guinness World Records yet. Vietnamese centipedes are endemic to Eastern Asia and is one of three introduced species present in Hawaii. Laophis crotaloides Laophis crotaloides was the largest venomous snake ever discovered. It slithered around what is now Greece four million years ago. It grew between 10 and 13 feet long and weighed as much as 57 pounds. The species wasn't as long as today's biggest venomous snakes, which reach around 18 to 20 feet, but with a typical king cobra weighing just 15 to 20 pounds, it was much heavier. It lived in grasslands with cool winters rather than the tropics where most modern large reptiles live. Paleobiologist Benjamin Keir said we've got something that, for its latitudinal placement and the climate reconstruction, is massively out of proportion. Paleontologist Sir Richard Owen first discovered fossilized evidence of Laophis crotaloides in Thessaloniki, Greece in 1857 in the form of 13 large vertebrae. Unfortunately, the bones were lost, and further evidence of the species did not turn up again until 2014, when a single vertebrae was discovered near Thessaloniki. Luckily, the bone made it easy for experts to gauge the snake's overall size. It's the largest and heaviest viper ever found, superseding modern record holders. Researchers are baffled at how this viper maintained the necessary metabolism for reaching its massive size in a cooling climate, and may admittedly know little about its behavior and lifestyle, given the single vertebrae they have to go off of. Komodo Dragon Also called the Komodo Monitor, the Komodo Dragon is the world's heaviest lizard. It reaches up to 10 feet long and can weigh over 300 pounds. Found only among Indonesia's lesser Sunda Islands, this gigantic reptile has been around for millions of years, thriving in the harsh climate of the island's tropical forests and other habitats. This species is one of few lizards in the world that has a venomous bite, and it's a powerful and stealthy hunter with a strong sense of smell that will spend hours stalking its prey. It will eat pretty much any kind of meat, from small rodents to deer to huge water buffalo. For years, everyone thought that the Komodo dragon used a deadly bacteria it had in its mouth as venom. But in 2009, biochemist and molecular biologist Brian Fry from the University of Queensland in Australia put a Komodo dragon into a medical scanner and discovered that the species has toxin-packed venom glands, like the Gila monster. These toxins cause massive bleeding, lower blood pressure, induce shock, and prevent clotting. Fry told National Geographic in 2013 that he suspects Komodo dragons kill prey using a grip, rip, and drip method, biting down with their sharp, serrated teeth, causing large wounds. The venom takes over from there, accelerating blood loss and sending the prey into shock. And while some researchers found evidence challenging the theory that the Komodo dragon uses bacteria as venom, others detected 54 disease-causing pathogens in the animal's saliva. But Fry and several other experts stand by their belief that the bacteria venom theory is baseless. Komodo dragons occasionally attack humans, and these attacks are sometimes fatal. A deadly attack in 2007 was the first in 33 years, but several others have unfortunately happened since then. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Belcher Sea Snake. Also called the faint banded snake, it is found primarily near the tropical reefs of the Indian Ocean, Gulf of Thailand, New Guinea, Indonesia, and the Philippine coastline. It has less commonly been seen off the Australian coast and near the Solomon Islands. Remember these places because if you're swimming in these areas, 
Be careful! One bite from the Belcher sea snake can kill a human within a half hour, and just one drop of venom is rumored to be able to kill up to 1,800 people. Its venom is 100 times more lethal than that of any other snake, including the inland taipan. Bite symptoms include vomiting, nausea, migraines, diarrhea, dizziness, convulsions, paralysis, and excruciating abdominal pain. Respiratory and kidney failure can also occur. An antivenom exists, but immediate treatment is critical to survival, which might be hard if you're out at sea. Fortunately, the Belcher sea snake is relatively docile and is unlikely to attack unless provoked, and only releases venom in about a quarter of its bites. It also has small jaws, making it difficult to latch onto most parts of a human. As the world's coral reefs increasingly face destruction, the species is seeking shelter closer to coastlines and therefore closer to humans. Whether this will lead to more bites among us remains to be seen. Number 8. The Blue-Ringed Octopus The Blue-Ringed Octopus is a genus that encompasses four small but very highly venomous species of octopus that reside in tidal pools and coral reefs of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, from Japan to Australia. They aren't very big, and they are very pretty, at least to me, but these little critters pack a punch. It's famous for its blue and black rings that flash when it feels threatened. It's warning you! Like many other venomous marine creatures, the blue-ringed octopus has a relatively docile nature and typically only attacks when provoked. The problem is that since they like to hide in tidal pools, it is possible you could accidentally step on one. Usually if they feel attacked, they will try to flee, but when fleeing is not an option or if you accidentally step on it, it will respond by biting with its beak. The thing is, you might not even feel it. However, it's important for a human to seek treatment immediately after being bitten by a blue-ringed octopus, as death can occur within minutes. The octopus's venom contains a neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin, which is 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide. By blocking sodium channels, tetrodotoxin causes severe and often total paralysis for up to 24 hours, and within minutes, respiratory failure can set in. Nausea and blindness are also major bite symptoms. Complete recovery is likely if a victim survives the first 24 hours after being bitten, but there is no known antidote. The survival of a bite victim usually depends primarily on the administering of artificial respiration or breathing assistance within minutes of being bitten. This treatment must be continued until the effects of the venom subside and the person is once again able to breathe on their own. Number 7. The Stonefish The stonefish is a member of the scorpionfish family, which also includes lionfish and zebrafish. It is believed to be the most venomous fish in the world. It lives in the warm, shallow tropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, like its friend the blue-ringed octopus, and often lies motionless and partially buried on the sea floor, awaiting its prey. They have a very sharp spine on their back, and as their name suggests, they look like stones, so along a rocky beach, it is easy to step on one. This, of course, scares them, so they stab you with the spine and eject their venom. Initial sting symptoms include intense pain and swelling at the sting site. Within minutes, swelling can spread throughout the entire body part. A man on vacation in Queensland said that the pain went from sharp and painful to being excruciating. He said it was like hitting your toe with a hammer and then rubbing over it again and again with a nail file. Other symptoms include difficulty breathing, shock, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, fever, convulsions, and paralysis, just to name a few. There can also be breakdown of the skin, which is sometimes severe enough to require surgery. Left untreated, a stonefish sting can be fatal, especially when someone is punctured in the chest or abdomen. Then you probably will need surgery to remove the barb. For those who survive, recovery usually takes up to 48 hours, although numbness and tingling may persist for several weeks. Treatments at the emergency room often include breathing assistance, IV fluids, and the administration of antivenom. Good news is that if you stick the injured area in hot water, it will deactivate the venom and can help with the pain. And now for number 6, but first, can you guess what the most venomous animal in the world is? Leave your answer in the comments below! I also want to give a quick shout out to Axman and Wafu. Hi guys! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like these! Number 6. King Cobra The King Cobra is the world's longest venomous snake, reaching up to 18 feet long. It can be found in the rainforests and plains of India, southern China, and Southeast Asia. The snake's color varies depending on the region, and most full-grown specimens are yellow, brown, black, or green. This naturally shy species typically avoids humans, but will become extremely aggressive when cornered. 
the king cobra can often stand tall enough to look its victim in the eye. A person will know when one of these terrifying snakes is after them, because they'll advance forward with up to one-third of their body in the air while flaring out their hoods and hissing. Although the king cobra is not the most venomous snake species, it's certainly very dangerous. Just one bite from a king cobra delivers enough venom to kill an elephant, or up to 20 humans, and can be fatal within 30 minutes. Good news is there is an anti-venom, and with proper and immediate medical attention, everything should be fine. Number 5. The Pufferfish The cutie pufferfish is among the most venomous marine creatures in the world. There are over 120 species of pufferfish, and most are marine fish, while around 40 dwell in brackish water and 29 are freshwater species. And they are all full of tetrodotoxin. They do not inject it through its bite or its spines, but what happens is that people like to eat them, and that's when you could be in trouble. There is no known antidote to pufferfish toxins, and one fish contains enough to kill up to 30 humans. Symptoms set in within 10 to 45 minutes and include salivation, vomiting, numbness and tingling near the mouth, paralysis, loss of consciousness, heart failure, and ultimately death. In certain parts of the world, including Japan, the pufferfish is considered a delicacy, and one wrong cut can mean certain death to the diner. Only trained, licensed chefs can prepare the meal, and this does not guarantee that the fish is rendered safe for consumption. One of the appeals of eating pufferfish is the paralyzing effect of ingesting some of the venom, which causes around a half dozen deaths annually. I'll pass on this delicacy. How about you? Is it worth the risk? Do you want to try it? Let me know in the comments! Number 4. The Cone Snail The Conus genus includes over 800 species of predatory snails, most of which are found in warm tropical seas and most of which possess toxic venom. Divers are warned against picking up these mollusks as souvenirs, as they may unintentionally fall victim to the snail's venom, which is known to instantly paralyze and eventually kill its prey. Just one cone snail's venom is estimated to be able to kill 700 humans. The venom varies from one species to another, but is typically very complex, with over 100,000 different bioactive compounds. But the variation and complexity of the cone snail's venom has prevented an effective anti-venom from being developed. However, there are steps that can be taken by divers to simply avoid these creatures, who typically only attack when provoked, usually when you're trying to grab it off of a rock. Some scientists believe that researching the cone snail's venom may lead to answers regarding some hard-to-treat medical issues in humans. A cone snail's venom impacts its target's nervous system so quickly, researchers are hoping to learn of ways to create similar effects with helpful medicines, perhaps leading to more efficient treatments for conditions like diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. Number 3. Deathstalker Scorpion This scorpion is among the world's deadliest scorpion species. It's thought to be responsible for around three-quarters of scorpion-related deaths every year. The straw-yellow deathstalker grows between three and a half and four and a half inches long. It resides in the arid shrublands and deserts of northern Africa and the Middle East. Deathstalkers live under rocks, in the abandoned burrows of other animals, and also dig their own burrows. Its venom contains a powerful mixture of neurotoxins and is so powerful that several companies have tried to develop anti-venom and even with the treatment, you still might not make it. Symptoms of the sting include extreme pain, convulsions, paralysis, and respiratory and heart failure. Despite being extremely dangerous to humans, the Deathstalker's venom is currently being used in cancer research and as a potential treatment for diabetes, as the neurotoxins of the venom act on channels associated with the regulation of insulin. A component of their venom, peptide chlorotoxin, is being used to help find and treat brain tumors as well as cancer. Number 2. The Boom Slang This venomous tree snake is native to sub-Saharan Africa. It is shy and non-aggressive, spending its days in the trees hunting prey and typically fleeing from anything it can't swallow. Given the boom slang's timid nature, it's incredibly rare for a human to get bitten by one. Moreover, the snake's fangs are located in the back of its mouth, making it even more unlikely for a human to fall victim to its bite. Around the world, less than 10 human deaths have been attributed to being bitten by a boom slang. In fact, humans didn't even know the boom slang was dangerous until about 1957, when a herpetologist named Carl P. Schmidt was fatally bitten by one. Schmidt was found dead in his home less than a day after being bitten, after succumbing to brain hemorrhaging and respiratory arrest. Subsequent analysis of the boom slang's venom showed that it was more toxic than many front-fanged snake species. Today, it's regarded as one of Africa's most venomous snakes. Bite symptoms include headache, nausea, and sleepiness, 
the venom's anticoagulating properties cause the most dangerous effects. As a hemotoxin, the venom causes the destruction of red blood cells, the degeneration of organs and tissues, and the loosening of blood clotting. Put simply, the boomslang's venom will cause a person to start bleeding from every possible orifice, including the nostrils and gums, and the victim will also suffer from severe internal muscle and brain hemorrhaging. The process is extremely slow and painful and can take up to five days. Symptoms set in slowly, sometimes causing victims not to realize how seriously at risk of dying they are. But there is an anti-venom and it can save your life, as long as you get to it in time. Number 1. The Box Jellyfish For those of you who guessed, here it is. While there are many types of venomous jellyfish, the Irukandji jellyfish is arguably the most dangerous on the planet, although it's kind of a tie, as you'll see. Found in coastal waters throughout the Indo-Pacific and off the northern Australian coast, these guys are deadly. The Irukandji jelly is tiny, only about 5 millimeters long, and you'll never see it coming. Its toxin is 100 times stronger than that of a cobra. The entire thing can sting you, not just its tentacles, and symptoms include severe muscle cramps, pain in the kidneys and back, burning sensations, headache, vomiting, and tachycardia. If you live, it won't be a fun memory. It is hard to say how many people have died from an Irukandji sting since most of the time death is attributed to other causes. Maybe even more venomous is the sea wasp box jellyfish. Since 1954, 5,568 deaths have been attributed to this jelly. These cube-shaped creatures are pale blue and transparent, with up to 15 tentacles that grow as much as 10 feet long each. Each tentacle has around 5,000 stinging cells that have evolved to kill fish and shrimp instantly. Box jellyfish stings are potentially fatal to humans. The venom's powerful toxins attack a person's heart, nervous system, and skin cells. Initial symptoms include vomiting, headaches, anxiety, and unbearable pain. Sometimes the lungs fill with fluid. Victims have been known to die before reaching shore by going into shock from the sheer excruciating pain of the sting and drowning, or succumbing to heart failure in the water. Those who survive often experience significant scarring where the bite occurred and suffer from pain for several weeks. Untreated, a box jellyfish sting can easily result in death. In the Philippines alone, an estimated 20 to 40 people die annually from these stings. In the summer of last year, 22 people were hospitalized with Irukandji stings along Australia's coast as it moves further south. Like I mentioned, the global mortality rate from box jellyfish stings is hard to calculate, according to experts, because symptoms often lead to misdiagnosis and doctors may even fail to detect a sting victim's cause of death. So be very, very careful if you ever visit these areas. Thanks for watching! Did you guess number one? Were you surprised at all? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe before you leave! I'll see you soon! Bye!